I've already mentioned that some questions may be difficult or even impossible to answer. So think about your research questions. Is it possible to answer these questions? Do you have time and resources to answer them? And also, would anyone be able to answer these questions? Because some research questions are simply not possible to answer. So think about, uh, for example, this kind of question. Are there uh, more girls than boys in language classes or in language courses? Or are there uh, more females than males in universities? It's a very simple question and it's very straightforward to answer because all it requires is some basic uh, statistics. So, and there are in fact more females and males in universities. So it's a question that's very realistic and possible to answer. But think now about the following question. Why do girls perform better in languages than boys? Why do girls learn languages better than boys? This is not a good question. Uh, for a number of reasons. Firstly, it assumes that girls are better at lear learning languages, which uh, tends to be a common belief, but it's not without its controversy. So it's not entirely sure whether this is the case. And even if they are, there are a variety of factors that may influence the, uh, the girls' uh, better learning of languages. So there could be, it could be the way they're brain pro uh, processes the language, it could be some combination of cultural and social factors, it could be that they are more motivated in the class or that girls are generally more communicative, so they communicate more, they uh, have more opportunity to uh, practice their language skills. So there could be a number of factors, so if you have this question why do they learn English better than boys, you're simply not going uh, to be able to account for all these factors in your study. So your study will not have uh, a really uh, high value because you won't be able to answer this question. So this uh, brings us to what a good research question is. A good research question needs to be precise, doable, realistic. So it should be possible to answer. It should enable you with your resources to answer this question. Uh, in a similar way, a bad research question is the one that is not realistic, is not possible to answer, it's quite often too broad and it's not practical. So uh, you will not be able to answer this question. I would also say that a bad research question is quite often based on a wrong assumption. So if I'm asking uh, a question, why do uh, Polish learners enjoy uh, being taught with a task-based uh, methodology is not a good question because I'm assuming that they do enjoy uh, being taught with this methodology. I'm asking why they enjoy being taught but what I'm doing wrong uh, straight away is assuming that they do enjoy it in the first place. So I would need to first find out whether they enjoy it prior to asking why they enjoy it. So this would already be uh, a wrong and a bad research question. And as I said, the, uh, the good research question needs to be possible to answer and uh, realistic and precise. So quite often it has to be narrow. It's a horrible feeling when you have to narrow down your questions because quite often you're uh, very ambitious and that's what I was doing when I was a student. So you really want to find out an import about an important aspect or issue. But then you're being told to narrow it down and uh, delete uh, this question, delete this question, leave this uh, very narrow uh, question. But uh, with time you will understand that it's actually, it doesn't harm your study but it actually benefits your study because if it is narrow you're actually possible to answer the questions uh, that you ask. So it can be too ambitious. Again, in my own uh, master's uh, study it was a very interesting study but the research questions were not so good I would say. I was interested to see whether uh, in English language classes having a native English speaking teacher would influence the students beliefs in any way. So I asked whether there is a relationship between having a native English speaking teacher and the students beliefs. What I did not realize at that time is that uh, although I tried to control for these factors so I tried to uh, compare uh, those who had been taught by native English speakers with those who had not been taught by native English speaking teachers, I didn't realize that 
this wasn't the only factor that could potentially influence their beliefs. So there, there is a ver variety of factors, of external factors, that could uh, have potentially influenced these uh, students' beliefs. So this was not a good question. It was a great idea. and In fact, this study is uh, getting published now, but I did have to change the research questions. And this uh, brings us to the final thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, you can change your research questions. You don't have to stick to these questions all the time. So don't worry if you if you develop the research question at uh, some point in the future, you may actually change it. If you're collecting the data and you're finding interesting things and then you realize that uh, you've got all this great data but it's not really answering this research question, but it would answer another research question effectively, you can always reframe your research questions at uh, later stages, so don't worry about this. And finally, you can have more than one research question. So you don't have to have one research question, you may have two or three, you can also have sub-questions. So this will give you uh, a lot more opportunity to explore the topic and also to be careful about the problems that I mentioned, whether uh, the questions are based on a wrong assumption, for example. So if you wanted to investigate uh, why uh, the Polish students enjoy being taught in a task-based by task-based methodology, you may have a research question asking do they enjoy being taught with task-based methodology and then a sub-question that asks if they do, why? Uh, 